Hello friends, in this episode, we're doing something just a little bit different. While our main focus will always be missing persons cases, this video will delve into the mysteries side of the channel name. Now while we're searching and writing this episode, I was a little bit hesitant at first to recount some of the bizarre stories being found. However, after giving it some careful consideration in the broader scope of things, I realize that in a world where people can literally turn a corner on a mountain trail and seemingly disappear from the face of the earth while leaving absolutely no trace in the process. And we have covered disappearances from Mount Shasta in previous videos. Well, then maybe some of these stories and legends aren't as far-fetched as first perceived. With that said, let's begin, shall we? Mount Shasta very few places in the United States are as completely steeped in mystery and the supernatural as Mount Shasta. Located in Northern California, only about an hour from the Oregon border, this semi-dormant volcano and the surrounding area are, according to legend, home to spirits, gods, Bigfoot, aliens, fairies, robots, ascended masters, Lemurians, occultists, underground bases, secret tunnels, and other strange entities and features. Rising to a height of 14,162 feet, Mount Shasta is an imposing figure set against a backdrop of stunning wilderness. Rugged outcrops, scenic vistas, mountain streams, waterfalls, lakes, glaciers, and caverns of various size. It truly is one of the most impressive mountains in the United States. And even though the last volcanic activity was way back in 1786, it's still currently considered active by the USGS. But aside from the beauty and natural grandeur, Mount Shasta has an ominous aura about it. The mountain does hold some dark secrets, many considered a place of portals to strange realms of the unexplained. The indigenous people of the area revered Mount Shasta as a magical and supernatural place many, many decades before the white man arrived in Northern California. One popular Shasta legend claims that before there were humans on the planet, the chief of the great sky spirits grew tired of his icy home in the above world. He used a stone to make a hole in the sky and shoved ice and snow into the hole. The resulting mound was what came to be known as Mount Shasta. Next, the chief of the sky climbed down onto Mount Shasta, and seeing it was barren, he chose to place trees there. And when he walked through the snow, it melted and formed streams and rivers. As the leaves began to fall from the trees, the sky chief used his breath to turn them into birds. The chief of the great sky spirits was so pleased with Mount Shasta that he chose to make it home for his family. Not missing the cold from the above world, the Sky Chief made a hole in the middle of the mountain and placed a fire inside it to keep his family warm. When he placed logs into the fire, the mountain would shake and emit sparks and spew fire. Although it's unknown as to exactly how Mount Shasta was named, one popular explanation states that the name comes from the Russian language. Supposedly, settlers from Russia who lived in coastal California were able to see the summit of Mount Shasta off in the distance. They referred to it as Shastal, which means white or pure in their language. This eventually came to be pronounced and shortened to just Mount Shasta. Others claim that one of the local tribes of the indigenous peoples in the area, known as the Shatstika, loved and hunted on the mountain, and it came to be named after them. Regardless of how it got to be named, Nowadays, Mount Shasta is a well-known and popular destination for snow skiers, hikers, hunters, anglers, spelunkers, and many others who love rugged outdoor activities. Mount Shasta is also a popular destination for New Agers and other seekers wishing to bask in the vibe of the mountain. Currently, Shasta is home to a huge amount of day spas, retreats, a Buddhist monastery, 
as well as a plethora of New Age consultants, Zen instructors, and those claiming to be ambassadors to space aliens and ascended masters. In fact, there is so much strangeness on the mountain, one is almost assured to have some sort of weird experience when visiting Shasta. Paranormal investigators state that the most unusual encounters usually happen when you least expect it and are far away from other people. Shaman, New Age seekers, and those trying to contact the mothership may inadvertently disturb the energies on the mountain and cause truly paranormal events to become hidden away, according to some. Nevertheless, there's been more than enough bizarre happenings in the area to suggest that there are strange powers at work here. In the lore of the Native Americans familiar with Shasta, the terms for ghost, soul, and life are very similar. According to these tribes, ghosts, which are often spotted near burial areas as flickering orbs of light, are to be feared, as merely observing them is said to be an omen foretelling bad luck, or perhaps even death. Also according to their legends, after death, the soul is said to travel west, rise into the sky, and then head into the Milky Way to the world of the afterlife. The Shasta Indians believe that singing funeral songs help the deceased spirit on its way. Also according to Shasta traditional lore, the entire region is haunted with Oxki, which literally translates to pains. But according to the natives, these are spiritual entities capable of taking on the form of tiny people and animals who live among the area's many boulders, lakes, summits, and also in the rapids and other tributaries of flowing water. The indigenous Shasta peoples consider the Oxki to be the cause of all illness, bad luck, and death, and also have the ability to jump into the bodies of unsuspecting victims. According to legend, only a true shaman can exercise away these demonic entities. In more recent and typical ghost lore, parts of Interstate 5 that run nearby the mountain are reportedly haunted by various unidentified ghosts, possibly the victims of car accidents. Or they may be tulpas or thought forms brought about by the indigenous people of the area. Some tribes believe that talking about or merely even thinking of certain dark entities can draw them out and cause them to take form. The ruins of old Shasta town from the 1800s lie just south of Mount Shasta and west of Redding, California, which at one time was the county seat. The old town area is home to several reported ghosts, especially in the old courthouse, where it's claimed that at night the sounds of criminal trials can still be heard, and in the gallows park at the back of the courthouse, where those found guilty were hung and still linger to this day. A pioneer baby's burial spot on nearby old Highway 99, which at one time was a stagecoach road through the area, is claimed to be haunted by a particularly evil and malevolent entity. Some of the stranger stories from the area are based on the Native American legends of Shasta being home to several mysterious races of beings, which include the aforementioned little people, but also tribes of reptilians and large malevolent humanoids known as the Shupchets, who legend says live in the area of Flume Creek and secretly traverse the lava tunnels to the summit of Mount Shasta. The early white settlers in the area also told of the tunnel traveling giants, referring to them as the Lemurians. The concept of Lemuria originally began as a rumored lost continent in the Indian Ocean from a somewhat scientific theory which explained how lemurs were able to migrate to India from Madagascar. Some folks, however, occultists and New Agers in particular, considered Lemuria as a lost continent which was home to an advanced race, the Lemurians, who were the supposed ancestors of the legendary Atlanteans of the other well-known lost continent of Atlantis. Legends state that the Lemurians are giant, human-appearing beings who bore some form of appendage on their massive forehead, which provided them with psychic powers. The story of the Lemurians on Mount Shasta mainly comes from a bizarre book called A Dweller on Two Planets, or The Dividing of the Way, 
which was written in the 1880s by cultist Frederick Spencer Oliver. Among other things, Oliver claimed that a secret city glittering with jewels was located inside of Mount Shasta, and he further established a connection between it and Lemuria. His writings were popular at the time, and his fantastical ideas of Mount Shasta and Lemuria were referenced and retold in many news articles and other books of that era. Along these lines of legend, there are also stories of a secret society which lives in the secret city deep inside Mount Shasta. The secret society is known as the Great White Brotherhood. Now that's not because of the color of their skin, but rather the brilliant white light that often surrounds these beings who also wear spotless white robes. They are said to be a fraternity of spiritually advanced beings or ascended masters who are drawn to Mount Shasta due to the energy found on its peak. The Brotherhood allegedly live inside of the mountain and travel through tunnels of gold to their hidden temples made of jewels and crystals. Guy W. Ballard, an occultist from Chicago, ventured to Mount Shasta in 1930 to inquire about reports from another occultist, William Paley, regarding a group of holy men called the Brotherhood of Mount Shasta, whom Paley claimed to have observed while traveling on the mountain. Ballard, along with his wife Edna, was extremely curious and ventured to Mount Shasta in hopes of contacting the ascended masters of which Pelly wrote. Once, when Ballard was out on a day hike alone, he paused to rest at a clear mountain spring in the McLeod River Valley area. He claims that while resting by the stream, he was approached by a strange young man who appeared out of nowhere and offered him a drink of some creamy, milky liquid. The young stranger told Ballard that the liquid came from what he called the universal supply. Ballard states that when he drank the liquid, it had an immediate electric and clarifying effect on him, making him feel oddly energized and refreshed. The young stranger then revealed his true name, the Ascended Master Saint Germain, and was suddenly clad in a white jeweled robe, making him appear godlike. As Ballard looked on in stunned amazement, he noticed that a mountain lion had approached him to within a few feet. Somehow able to fight off his fear of the animal, Ballard claimed that the mountain lion suddenly became as docile and playful as a kitten. At this point, St. Germain proudly informed Ballard that he had passed the test of courage and gave him four small brownish cakes. Ballard ate the cakes and claimed that they further increased the clarity of the liquid he had consumed and aided him in being receptive to the Master's teachings. St. Germain stated that he had searched several continents for someone worthy to learn his instructions regarding the great laws of life, and now Ballard, his wife Edna, and their son Donald were chosen to be his accredited messengers. After a series of meetings with the Ascended Master, Ballard claims he was able to channel St. Germain's wisdom and plans for implementing the Seventh Golden Age, the I Am, which Germain stated would bring about a new age of earthly perfection. Ballard further claimed that through channeling St. Germain, he was also able to view his own past lives and claimed that he had been George Washington in a previous life. When Ballard returned to Chicago in 1931, he set about putting St. Germain's plans for the New Age of Enlightenment in motion. By 1932, Ballard and his wife Edna had founded the I Am Religious Sect, the St. Germain Press, and the St. Germain Foundation. Ballard, using the pseudonym Godfrey Ray King, began turning out books, pamphlets, and articles about his new religion. By 1936, Ballard had amassed a large literary collection of several books, compilation of songs and affirmations, as well as a periodical magazine. Ballard had no problem drawing crowds who came to listen to he and Edna channel St. Germain's teaching, and soon schools and reading rooms began to spring up, and by 1938, the sect had almost three million devotees. Skeptics claimed that the new religion was nothing but old, recycled cult practices, and when Guy died in 1939, although his wife Edna claimed that he had not passed on, but rather ascended, 
Many of the devoted became disillusioned with Ballard's rather ordinary departure from this plane and stopped attending the meetings. After recovering from alleged mail fraud charges, the I Am movement, although now considerably smaller, survives until this day. The I Am Reading Room in the town of Mount Shasta offers Ballard's channeled writings, Ascended Master and I Am Art, and I Am Musical Recordings that are purported to alter consciousness and allow for further spiritual enlightenment. The music has been described as having an ethereal warbling quality that many believe enhances, among other things, psychic abilities and astral travel. The experiences Ballard wrote about in 1930 inspired many other stories of encounters with strange beings on Mount Shasta. In 1932, Edward Lasner claimed he knew of white-robed people who hoarded a cache of gold and lived at the 11,000-foot level. And in 1934, a man named Abraham Mansfield claimed he met a whole tribe of Lemurians on the mountain who revealed to him an extensive network of secret tunnels. Two decades later, spiritualist Earlene Cheney stated that she received an initiation in a secret temple hidden upon Mount Shasta. Before becoming a spiritual guru, Cheney was a Hollywood starlet, possibly explaining her passion and penchant for the elaborate costumes and theatrics which she used in her New Age church and mystery school, Astara, founded in 1951. Writing in her book, Secrets from Mount Shasta, Cheney tells how she and her husband were given instructions to go to Mount Shasta during a channeling session in 1952. While camping at Panther Meadow, located on the south side at about 7,385 feet, Cheney and her husband suddenly felt led to climb farther up the mountain. During their ascent, they were met by a strange young man who seemed to know all about their quest and proceeded to give them his teachings. Eventually, the pair were escorted into a secret place known as the Cave of the Mystic Circle. It was here that they were also introduced to other adepts, including the Ascended Master Kudhumi, who also assisted them with their teachings. The pair's lessons climaxed in an initiation in which Cheney claimed she was shown the inner great temple at the peak of Mount Shasta, which featured what she described as a great astral cathedral lit from above by a glorious star. She further stated that these sights can only be seen by the truly initiated and remain invisible to the eyes of lesser adepts and mere mortals. Cheney has also previously claimed to have been initiated in a secret ceremony inside the Great Pyramid of Egypt, which does make her one of a very few select souls on this plane of existence indeed. Current New Agers and occultists claim that St. Germain and other ascended masters and adepts continue to wander the mountain appearing to seekers, particularly in the area around Panther Meadow. These same occultists will readily explain how the earth is actually hollow and contains numerous secret underground cities, among them Telos, where descendants of ancient Lemuria currently live and are presided over by the ascended master High Priest Adama. Mount Shasta is also known for its weird glowing mystery lights. These mysterious floating orbs of light have been reported on the mountain since the arrival of the white settlers and among the Native Americans years prior to that. The best time to observe the lights is usually at dusk, around midnight, and just before dawn. While indigenous tribes of the area thought the lights to be ghosts, New Agers and occultists prefer to think that the lights are from the secret ceremonies of the Lemurians or the Great White Brotherhood. The lights have become so well known that they alone have brought the curious to Mount Shasta. Based on newspaper articles from around the turn of the last century, the lights were observed by passengers on trains that passed by the mountain in the night. The mysterious lights continue to be reported today and many people have come to associate them with UFO activity that occurs frequently on the mountain. If you would like to perhaps catch a glimpse of these lights without traveling to Mount Shasta, there are live webcams available online which offer 24-hour day streams of the mountain's peak. 
There are literally thousands of lava tube caves known to exist on and nearby Mount Shasta. The strangest one is Pluto Cave, which was thought to have been created by a basaltic lava flow almost 200,000 years ago. The tunnel-like cave was sacred to the indigenous tribes of Shasta and was rediscovered by white settlers during the mid-1800s. As it's very foreboding and eerie, it takes its name from the Roman god of the underworld, Pluto. In addition to being called Pluto Cave, it's also known to the locals as Pluto's Cave and Pluto Caves. The cave has garnered quite a reputation in supernatural and occult circles as a place to find extraterrestrials or various entities from the spirit realm that live deep inside the mountain. Recent explorers have reported coming across evidence of sacrificial fires and objects from rituals left behind in the cave by those who have held secret ceremonies and vigils for paranormal or occult purposes. Stories abound of people going insane after spending the night in the cave tube where they were allegedly confronted by unspeakable horrors. While these tales may be the stuff of wild campfire stories or urban legends, those who have visited the cave do find it frightening and eerie nonetheless. Another strange area located near Mount Shasta is Burney Falls, an amazing natural wonder that pours 129 feet down into Burney Creek in the MacArthur Burney Falls State Memorial Park. President Theodore Roosevelt once remarked that this amazing waterfall should be considered the eighth wonder of the world. There are persistent stories of fairies or fey folk who appear in the mist or just in the edge of the vision of those who gaze out over the falls. Perhaps these fairies are actually the little people described in Native American legends from around Mount Shasta. It's also stated that these little people will only appear to those who are honestly seeking them for spiritual enlightenment and not just for a paranormal thrill. Bernie Falls is located approximately six miles north of the junction of highways 299 and 89 on Highway 229. Fairy sightings have also been reported near the area around McLeod Falls, which is made up of three amazing falls flowing into the McLeod River. While the lower and upper falls can easily be accessed by vehicles, the middle falls, reportedly the most haunted, is accessible only on foot. Not surprisingly, the middle of the three falls is also claimed to be the best spot for ferry sightings. McLeod Falls is located on Highway 89, approximately six miles east of the town of McLeod. Mount Shasta is also considered to be one of the most active hotspots of North America's UFO activity. Those well-versed in extraterrestrials state that Mount Shasta is a prime spot for visiting aliens, and weird lights are often reported hovering near the area at night, and have also been spotted disappearing into the mountain. Castle Crags State Park, just south of the town of Dunsmuir, California, along Interstate 5, is also considered to be another active UFO hotspot. The trails in the park lead into strange landscapes of weird, jagged rock formations, and it's the perfect location for encountering anomalous phenomena. While Northern California is full of Bigfoot sightings and encounters, Bigfoot legends seem to be a more modern tale around Mount Shasta. Gigantic humanoid footprints discovered in 1955 at the 11,000 foot level have been said to be those of Bigfoot by some or of giant Lemurians by others. One of the oddest reports ever to come out of Mount Shasta was in 1962 when a woman claimed to have watched a female Bigfoot give birth high up on the mountain. To this day, New Age seekers, campers, hikers, and even loggers have had sightings of these tall, hairy cryptids on Mount Shasta. Well, there you have it. The strange, strange tale of Mount Shasta. Considering all the paranormal, supernatural, and occult activity that goes on here, perhaps it is no surprise that people have gone missing from the mountain, leaving nary a trace. If you've enjoyed this video, please let us know in the comments below. We're considering future episodes covering other paranormal hotspots, such as Joshua Tree, California, Sedona, Arizona, 
and Crater Lake, Oregon, strange places which also have a history of mysterious disappearances. In the meantime, take care of yourselves and each other. I'm Steve Stockton, and I'll talk to you next time.